Hey guys, it's B from Two Town Aquatics. Today I'm going to be doing a quick little review on the Rena Philstar XP3 canister filter. Basically, going to show you how to set it up and do maintenance since it is the regular time for me to do my maintenance on the filter. So, I'm going to show you the different options, the setup, and then we'll get into the actual uh, review. Here are all the parts from the filter. We have three different chambers inside of the actual box the lid for the box. We have the two types of filter tubes. The blue is the intake, the black is the outtake. Then you have the port that connects them to the tubes and then the tubes. So basically what you can see here is that there are a lot of customization options. I have this third bucket inside this uh, water right here because it actually houses the bacteria and I don't want those bacteria to be dying out when I'm uh, doing a water change. So it's a good idea to keep the water that you emptied out from this filter box, put in a different bucket like I have here, and then keep your bacteria in there just so it doesn't shock them and you have to go through the cycling process all over again. So the way it advises you to set up your filter and how I actually have it set up is you first want to have um, the media that traps particulates, then you're going to have your biological, and then third you're going to have your uh, carbon and your fine filter particulate matter trapper. So basically here I have a 30, what's called 30 ppi and as you can see it's done its job, it's trapped little pieces of grass and a lot of uh, detritus or whatever it might be. And then here's the 20 ppi which is a little finer than 30 ppi. So after going through this, these are like two sponges that really trap all the, the matter that's floating around whether it's fish uh, poop or fish food that hasn't been eaten and just gets trapped in the filter this is really going to trap it so when cleaning this what I do is take the same amount of water that came from your tank and you're just going to want to squeeze it in there it's like a sponge just so you can get some of that stuff out you can already see the water changing color do the same for the 30 ppi and then 30 ppi goes in first and then you put the 20 ppi in there and as you can see there is more room so you can put a carbon pack in here if you want but I just keep it like that now I'm going to skip to the third compartment which is the top compartment because we already know what's in the second so on top here we have our fine particulate matter this is what really traps all the stuff that comes through your aquarium. It gets really dirty really fast. And these are what you replace the most. So the 30 and 20 ppi, I think you replace every two or three months. This you're supposed to place, it says every water change, but that's just the company, you know, trying to make you buy more, in my opinion. So I do it every month, which is fine. But as you can see, it gets really black and nasty. So you, you might as well just give it a quick rinse. rinse. And I usually do this about twice a month. This is just regular uh, maintenance. It's not really changing out any of the pads. Then underneath you see I have my two carbon media package. Um, and what you want to remember is that if you rinse these before, see how they're already black right there, it turns your, your hands and your water black. So I do give them a quick rinse, but don't go too uh, don't 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 go too crazy because if you do then you'll just be rinsing them for hours because they do just keep giving off black and uh, so yeah I have my two carbon packages in here um, I'll put the link or a uh, description in the description of what different types I use <clears throat> and so you have your two carbon packets like that you put the little separator in and you put your fine particulate matter sponge and that's that. And you have a top for this that goes on the top. I like rinsing these off too because they get pretty dirty. And throw that back on. I'm going to go ahead and start putting these in the actual canister box. So first, put your 20, 30 ppi in there. It's easier to put them in all separately than trying to put them all in at once because then your hands can't fit in there and you really want a tight seal between the boxes or it's going to cause a lot of problems with your uh, setup later. Um, then I'm going to put it in the second and what you can see here, here is the media that houses my bacteria. What came with the filter was these five black stars so that's kind of a con of this filter, it doesn't come with a lot of filter media to begin with but it's easy to buy more as you can see I bought the rings. 
So throw that in there with the grate. And then I also have, at this part, a phosphor um, bag. And what this does is it lowers the phosphate levels in your tank. I'm, uh, like I said in the previous video, I'm probably going to be taking this out pretty soon because my phosphate levels have evened out. But in the beginning of my tank, I did um, have high phosphate levels, so I threw this in there and it took care of them pretty quick. Then I have another grate, and then a, uh, this is optional, I kind of just made this setting set up up. Put in another fine filter pad right there, and you're going to throw this in there. Like I said, you don't want to make sure that the seal is tight. As you can see, see how there's a little bit of a uh, uneven right there? You're going to want to fix that so it's really sitting on top of each, each other in order for there not to be an air leakage in your filter and for it to stay quiet. And we go ahead and throw in the third compartment. Same thing. And that's uh, how your filter box is going to end up looking. What I love about this canister filter is just the ease of use. You throw on the top here, clasp down these four clasps, and boom, you're done. Real tight seal. It has these handles on the side here. Makes it real easy to pick up, especially when it's full, it's pretty heavy. So what you're going to want to do now is attach your filter pipes to each other. You can see you can extend the lengths of the intake. I just have it at full length because my tank's pretty tall. And then what I have is my filter tube is already pre-cut because obviously I've been using this filter. And um, as you can see, it has turned black. Now at first, I was pretty sketched out about that. I didn't know what it was. But I found out that it's just bacteria. Uh, that grows on the inside of your tube. So it's actually beneficial. It doesn't look that hot, but um, you can easily clean it with a spring cleaner. And um, it doesn't affect your water quality or anything, so don't worry about that. Um, so I actually might replace the tube soon because this is eight months old. But other than that, if you do start to see that um, your tubes are turning black or brown, don't worry about it. This is the quick disconnect valve, and this is important in priming and how you disconnect your filter box from the actual tubes when cleaning. I usually don't take off the tubes and the pipes because they don't really need to be cleaned, and uh, I'm just doing that for the purposes of this video. But basically, you just disconnect that from the box right here, take this out, and go do your maintenance on whatever's inside here. Now that your filter tubes are around the tank, and underneath, you're going to connect the quick connect, connect valve to your actual aquarium box. And I'll show you what to do next. The quick connect valve is connected. Now you're going to want to come up here, unscrew this cap. You're going to want to pour water through the intake pipe until it starts coming out the outtake. This is a very important method of priming. This is the first thing you're going to do. You then screw the cap back on come down to the quick connect valve and just pull it forward all the way as you can see so after your filter stops bubbling you can go ahead and wait another minute and then plug in your filter and if your filter is making any sort of noise at all it could be one of a few reasons either your boxes your different compartments inside the box are um, not completely stacked straight so there's little air pockets that air can get in and that's what's causing the bubbles to come out and make noise you didn't put enough water inside of the actual tubes themselves or this cap is loose or you didn't pull the quick, quick connect valve down far enough either that or you just didn't wait uh, long enough to plug in your filter after um, priming it so that's it guys you can go ahead and fill a uh, up your aquarium, top it off because it took water from your aquarium, put it in the filter box, and um, enjoy the success of your arena, Philstar.